what you are looking at right here is not some carefully crafted landscape. No, 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 not at all. This is actually a material using the great new technology of nanite tessellation. Now, another super awesome thing to know is nanite tessellation works with any old static mesh we have. So, here we have our good friend Suzanne from Blender, and I've imported her into Unreal, and look at that. We have created art using the new capabilities of Unreal Engine 5.4. So if we go into Nanite Visualization here, we can see all the ooh, triangles created just from a material. And speaking of materials, yes, we can just change it like that. So easy, so fun. And again, since this is all 3D geometry, kind of, we can get it to react with lighting properly. We have these really nice shadows, thanks to the power of Lumen and Nanite working together. So, are you ready to create this kind of awesomeness, huh? And welcome back to Techno V, the number one channel for your tech tutorials, news, and reviews. My name is Viraj Das, and in this tutorial, we will, I will go step by step in how to set up in your project using Unreal Engine 5.4 Preview. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so. Here we are inside Unreal Engine 5.4, and the first thing we, get, we have to do is we go into games, and you can choose whatever you want. I'm gonna go with blank. I like ray tracing, because ray tracing is pretty cool. And then I'm gonna name it Nanite Tessellation Create. And now it's just the waiting game. All right, so now that the engine has launched, we can go ahead and go to Edit, Plugins, Nanite, and then Nanite Displaced Mesh. Go ahead, toggle that, and do note that it is in beta, so not perfect. Little kinks here and there, but should be good for now. Go ahead and restart the engine, and again, we shall wait. Here we are, but we will have to re restart the engine again. Not yet, because if you go into the Epic Games Launcher, find your project, go ahead, right click it, and then show in folder. Then close the engine, exit, okay, got it? And then go ahead into the config. Now, what we're about to do might seem scary. Don't get scared, it'll all be fine, okay? Go into default engine, scroll down, see, pretty scary, right? Anyway, scroll down till you see right about here r.nanite.allow tessellation equals one. Now, let me just make sure spelling is correct. Did I do everything right? Perhaps. Okay, r nanite dot tessellation equals one all right so these are the two things we need to add in r dot nanite dot allow tessellation equals one r dot nanite dot tessellation equals one okay got it i know scary part is over just <sighs> take a breath and relax all right but make sure to save first if we've done it right, there's no chance we could have broken the engine. But if we didn't, then we're kind of out of luck. Either way, we launch the project, and we wait again. All right, everything seems to be fine so far. Hopefully, we didn't break anything. And then we can't do anything until we have a material that we apply tessellation to. So go ahead, add Quixel content. Now, for me, I like to add the gigantic, 
I forgot the rest of it. Oh, here we go. Gigantic Shrubland Terrain. Now, I already have it downloaded at the highest quality. So, I'm just going to click Add. But if you don't, if you're getting something new that you haven't downloaded before, go ahead and download first. Click Add. Might take a second or two. So, just chill. Six and a half hours later. Okay, well, it came in. I, it didn't tell me anything. You betrayed me. Um, but if you notice, this is not exactly a full-on customizable material because this is a material instance. So what we need to do is we need to build our own material. Oh, yeah. But don't worry. This is not hard. Not at all. So go ahead. Click material. I'm going to call M underscore massive. What is it called? Massive underscore shrubland underscore I'm just gonna call it tessellation just any name works and then go ahead and click on this main node here type nanite and then use with nanite yes we do want to use it are you sure do we want to use it I think so. So yes, we do want to use it with an add -on. And then, yes, we want to enable tessellation. T tessellation. <sighs> Brain fart. Okay. Then, we need to add the textures. And just start plugging them in. Normal goes with normal. And now, here's where things get kind of woo. So, we have red into ambient occlusion. Green goes into roughness, and blue is displacement. Remember that. And we won't be able to see anything yet because we've not applied the material. So we're going to create a new level. I'm going to go basic. And then let's create a landscape. So go into the landscape mode and don't touch anything. Leave it as is. Or if, if you have something different than I do, copy this down. And then click create. Then what we're going to do is take a look at our beautiful landscape with this checkered pattern. We don't want a checkered pattern. Just saying. So go ahead, click on the landscape, and then uh, scroll down till you see. Actually, just might be easier to search it up. Nanite. Enable it. Because do we want nanite? I think so. I think we do want nanite. So, go ahead, build data. And keep in mind, uh, all of this is, I, I went back to selection mode. Just, yeah. And then, what we can do is, go back in to the content browser, just click on the material we want to use, and then click this button, the arrow. And, ooh, yeah! We have stuff popping out. If we look into the nanite visualization overview look at that we have stuff coming out of the ground and we didn't even have to paint a single thing on this landscape but let's be honest this thing looks kind of goofy so <laughs> we will use the legendary texture coordinate node oh yeah and go ahead and plug this into all of the uvs for the textures and then open this up. Then we want to we want to use the value 0 0.001 on both. Now, if you're not if you're not following exactly along with this video and you're using your own texture, then the values will be a little bit different. But with a little playing around, things will work. Don't worry. So here we have it. You can see that things are popping out. Things are actually looking pretty decent right now. You know, it looks like a landscape. Then, what we can do is, this thing is kind of flat, right? Not, not exactly, but still. For a landscape, this is, I, I call these like rolling hills, maybe. But we want mountains! I want to see mountains again. Mountains, Gandalf! So, Nanite, I don't know why Capstock is on, but okay. Make sure to have the main node selected. And then, open this displacement here. And then I'm going to change mine to 50. Again, play around if you're using different materials. But I found 50 works for me. And look at that. Now again, 
tessellation is in beta. So, yeah, it, it does look kind of weird. But we just built a landscape using a material, a material, not, nothing else. And it uses nanite. How awesome is that? Okay, now let's say you don't want to use nanite tessellation on a landscape. You know, totally valid. It's, uh, let's say you want to put it on a static mesh. And that is completely possible, you know? So, what, the first thing we have to do is, you know, we, we need a static mesh. So, I'm going to grab our dear friend Suzanne from Blender. I'm just going to bring it into Unreal. Just default. Import. But... If we bring Suzanne out, oh no, oh no, oh no, there's no material. And, you know, without a material, without any nice looking geometry, this does not look like Unreal. This looks like, I have no idea, this, this, this is an abomination. We need that Unreal Engine 5 quality right there. So, if we just go ahead and place that in a nice location there. No, oh, oops. Okay. Um, if we place that in a nice location there, we should be good. But still looks terrible. Just terrible. So what we can do is we can go on and find another Quixel asset. I don't know. Well, let's, let's see what I have. Under surfaces. I think this... Hmm. You know, maybe some rocks will look nice. Well, let's try this add okay so now that it's in there we can go ahead and close that and then under mega scans we should see aha there we go but again no tessellation on this so we're just gonna have to create our own material I'm gonna call this N and then I'm gonna call it Suzanne hoping I spelled that right Go ahead, open that, and then, same process as before. We can just drag this on out, connect a few things here and there, base color to base color, normal to normal, ambient occlusion, oh wait, I almost forgot. We need to enable nanite here. So again, this is the same exact process as, as um, before. Connect it. And then, just knock this out right now. Texture coordinate, open that up. Connect to the UVs. And this, this should be all set up. And now, we can just drag that onto our good friend here. But, oh, the insult, the abomination! It's not doing anything. There is no nanite happening. Nothing's, nothing's happening. What's going on? Well, keep in mind, this is nanite tessellation. So, this thing, our beautiful friend Suzanne here, needs to be nanite, which is, it is currently not. Okay, it is nanite now. It is beautiful now. So, you'll still see no nothing is happening. So, what we can do is, we can just undo adding the material there does that keep yeah okay so it's, it's still nanite make sure of that and then just go ahead and add the material again so just drag it on and then make sure this is very important make sure here nanite displacement needs to be some crazy amount just so you know that it's actually taking effect aha see that's how we know so clearly four or five or whatever that original one was not working. So we'll try ten. Let's see how that happens. Let's see how that works. Oh, I can now I can start seeing the geometry. But let's take it further. Let's go maybe twenty. Again, this is all just trial and error to see what works, what doesn't work. But now things are happening. And what I do want to do is for texture coordinate, let's let's make this a bit uh, smaller so smaller means bigger values remember that here we go 
So now the texture is smaller, and it is more exaggerated. So 20, mm, too much. Now this is what we were going for. So this, as you can see, is very, very powerful. We can adjust the lighting and all the shadows, thanks to our good friend Lumen. Works, our, our, our shadows are perfect. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> that, that's what you get for doing real time. But, hey, it works. Let's see, all of these triangles, all of these are from our good friend, The Material. All right, so tell me what you thought in the comments below about nanite tessellation and all the other features introduced in UE 5.4. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, or any of my other videos, if you thought they were worthwhile. And I'll see you in the next video.